Well, hey, 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 good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday night stream. I uh, hope everybody's had a good week, and uh, I think I got everything worked out this time, so hopefully this is running smooth for everybody, and I don't sound like a robot. <laughs> but anyway, um, we'll get right to it. So tonight, um, I'm going to do my dog, Jack. So each week I try to mix things up a little bit. I try not to do the same thing over and over. Last week, of course, I did caricature. Um, I think I've done the caricatures for the last few times. So tonight we're going to do some dog art. Um, got some new devices set up. So like I say, I'm trying a little bit different setup this time. I'm, you know, like I say, I'm still learning as we go. So these are hopefully getting a little better and a little better each week. Um, so I've still got to work out a few kinks, but you know what? That's that's what life's about, right? You learn and you go and you move forward. So anyway, um, so I've got a few pictures uh, pulled up here of him. He went to the uh, groomer last week and got groomed. He was <laughs> he was in bad shape. I was calling him a fraggle. That's how bad he looked. But uh, we did a lamb cut on him and he's absolutely adorable he's a cute little guy um and for those of you who don't know let me tell you how i got jack um first of all i'm a big animal lover um i do dog art must love dogs art.com you know all that good stuff uh but anyway we have two water collies we have uh sally and alice well my uncle uh who was uh Seven, I believe he was 76, 74, he was, he was up there. Anyway, for the last uh, few years, that's one, what I would do on Mondays is he was never been married, uh, served in the Marine Corps, got wounded in Vietnam. He was, uh, anyway, he was a uh, retired, uh, and, he, and he worked in a cotton mill, local cotton mill. Anyway, he was retired anyway. He was old, elderly. He didn't really have anybody take care of him. So I would go down every week, cut his grass, do any kind of housework he needed done. And um, he had three Cocker Spaniels. And they all got old and, and died. And he was lonely. didn't have anything to keep him company. So he got this little poodle. Jack, uh, he, he actually named him Cutter. And uh, sadly, he passed away. My uncle passed away in December. And poor little Jack was down there. He had nowhere to go. Um, we didn't know what, was, what we were going to do with him. At first, I was going to give him away to somebody. I brought him home, showed him to my wife, and she says, no, he's not going to a pound. He's not going to somebody else. He's going to stay right here with us. He has been a challenge. He, um, he loves to bark. He loves to protect. He's a very protective little guy, but he is just as cute as a button. But anyway... Long story short, he started to merge and mesh with our family uh, a little bit. It gets a little better each week. He, um, he, he, uh, he, he's a very domineering little guy. He, he wants to run the show with those two big border collies, and, and it's kind of funny to watch. But anyway, like I said, he just got groomed, and I've got some great pictures of him. And I'm gonna kind of, I'm, I'm gonna let put this on as a slideshow and let you guys see the pictures I'm working off of, but. As I'm doing a caricature, not a not a portrait. Um, so one of one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of you won't see me work off of any specific photo. There is one I'm going to use mainly for his face, and there's one I'm going to use for his for what I show of his body and stuff. And I don't think I'm going to I don't know if I'm going to put any clothes on him in this picture because uh, he does have a lot of clothes because he's spoiled. Um, but we're going to get right to it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch us over to art mode, and hopefully this works. <laughs> All right. And you can see his little pictures up there in the corner. You got me down in the corner, and you got my nice display right here with my iPhone acting as camera. Isn't that cool? I'm always amazed by technology when it works. <laughs> so anyway, that one um, of just his face... <laughs> Where he's being held up that's the one I'm going to mainly use for his face so what I'm going to do let's go ahead and pull that up real nice and big on my other monitor over here you guys can't see that obviously but I can let me pull this in a little bit so I can see it a little better okay all right hopefully that's not in the way all right and I'm gonna thank you I appreciate it <laughs> Who know from now, 
I try to be a professional. <laughs> but still uh, have some humility and be a down-to-earth person. So, anyway, so I got Jack pulled up, and we're going to... Uh, I'm going to start on him. I'm just going to start doing some sketching here. And there again, I'm going, I'm going to be exaggerating him a little bit. But, you know, not, not too awful much. I'm going to start with that big old nice round head of his. He's got a, he's a beautiful dog. He is just absolutely precious. I think I want to exaggerate that snout a little bit more than that so and he's got this nice big old poodle ears hopefully we'll get a few viewers in here tonight I've been trying to build this up it's been taking a little while but you know I've been really impressed with uh, with Twitch so far. I like YouTube, but and and, and as always, um, after the fact, this video will go on my YouTube channel. If anybody wants to go back and look at it later, um, it'll be there. <laughs> Scroll. Let me roll, roll up in here a little bit. Yeah, one of the biggest one of the biggest issues uh, hurdles I was trying to conquer with my streaming was uh, I was trying to do it wireless, and I've got it, and I've got a really I've got really good internet. I've got um, four hundred, and I have a uh, I have a Nighthawk uh, router. So I've got good internet, but it still wasn't enough wireless. So I've connected an ethernet cable. That's made a huge difference. So now I'm getting some consistent uh, streaming. And, of the, and the other thing was uh, figuring out the cameras. Because I don't know if any of you guys have, uh, any of you stream right now. It's It's... Streaming stuff is hard to come by right now. Everything is so expensive. Um, but I did look up. Um, I already had a DSLR camera. so And I'm using my iPhone for my second camera. Because I was going to get a, an actual uh, camera. But they're, they're high. But I was able to get a, uh, an Elgato key light. Those were... Those are going for three and four hundred dollars, but I did finally find one. I lucked up and found one on the actual uh, Corsair website a couple weeks ago, so that's helped out. All right, there's that cute little face. All right, and let's see. Let me see how much I want to exaggerate him. Let me look at his little because he's got a he is adorable. Yeah, let's, we're going to give him a little cute little. I think I am going to put a bandana on him. He always comes. He always comes from the uh, groomer with a bandana. And I think I will put his collar in there as well. All right. Let me uh, let me adjust this. Make sure you guys can. Can you guys see that? Okay. You guys can see the picture. Okay, that I'm working on. I know it's. Might be able to bring this camera back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me pull this back a little bit so hopefully you can see a little bit more of the paper. All right. All right. Let me make sure I got what I need. All right. So now I'm going to switch to a different photograph for his body. There's another one you guys will see in the rotation of him sitting on the counter so that's going to be mainly the one I use for the little body I do on him and he's got those he's got that cute little like I say that lamb cut I'm going to exaggerate that 
And the reason we went with the lamb cut on him uh, the last time I actually did a, uh, I took I, t- I had taken him to a different groomer. And if you guys know anything about poodles, um, they you know there's a lot of different kind of haircuts you can give them, which I'm learning as I go along, <laughs> just like with streaming. Uh, but he uh, the cut the girl other girl did. Uh, it she didn't she didn't do what I asked and, and it had a she chopped all his tail off I mean and he has a you know I'm, and I'm gonna add that in for for for, uh, for looks but he uh, so she chopped all his tail off and it was like he looked horrible he looked like he had a little nub sticking up there so but this lady. Who I'd actually actually was the groomer my uncle always took him to. I took him back to her. She actually had been closed for a little while, not just across coronavirus, but because she had uh, to move to a new location. But she's back in business here. She's here in my hometown, and uh, <laughs> she uh, she does an absolutely fantastic job. And plus, she already knew him. All right, y'all, that's looking great. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start doing some ink work on him now. I'm going to go back to my other picture. And let's see here. So he's going to be, uh, like I say, this is a caricature, but I'm, you know, I'm exaggerating him a little bit more than I usually do. A lot, of, a lot of times, even with my caricatures of animals, I don't do a lot of exaggeration with them. Um, but I'm, I am doing a little bit more with him, make, giving him the big head, little body thing. So, let me get my ink out. I'm going to ink, it's going to be, uh, and eventually I'm going to color it. I may not have time to color this on stream tonight, uh, but you, that's usually what ends up happening with these is I draw this stuff out, and then I go back later and actually do the, uh, the color part. But we'll see how it goes. We're, we've been on about 15 minutes. And I try to keep these right around an hour, because uh, I do have other people in the house that want to stream as well. So, and I always like to start with the eyes. That's always my favorite part to capture of any subject, a human or dog. Right, he is just. <laughs> I'm not going to do exactly what's in front of me, but I'm going to try to stay pretty close to it. That's part of the beauty of caricature is you, uh, you do what you want. <laughs> oh, and he's got these big old, big old brown eyes. I really appreciate that. Where are you uh, chatting from or watching from? Awesome. love the UK. I want to go back whenever we get to travel again. Oh, wow. <laughs> Past your bedtime, huh? <laughs> yeah, I've been trying, I've been trying to figure out the best times to do these as well. I've been Sticking with 8 p.m. on Sundays, but um, I may try. I may try some different uh, days. I've I've got four weeks scheduled 
right now, but um, maybe after that I'll, and I may and I may start adding in a couple of extra a day through the week too, uh, just so we can see how that works out. <clears throat> And start on that nose. So mainly what I start off doing first of all is I mainly grab all the I usually grab all the really dark areas and then I'll kind of move around and start working on uh, detail and things like that. There's so many different approaches to uh, to art and to especially to animal art as well. Uh, everybody has their own little way of doing it. Got a news. Let's see if we can get him a little, a little mouth in there. And he looks almost like he's got a little bit of a crooked sideways smile, so I think I'll go ahead and show that. At least from this picture. He is not the most photogenic dog I have. He he uh he jumps around a bit. <laughs> Like I say, he's he's very very energetic little guy. Thank you. Little... All <laughs> Love it. And one of the challenges of a poodle, of course, is the curly hair. Uh, I'm not talking about just grooming them, I'm talking about uh, drawing it as well. It's showing that he has those little curls. Um, and a lot of that, of course, will be done with color. Let me get this little. They, had him, they brushed him out really well, too, when they groomed him, so. So, uh, Uno, do you have any uh, animals, any pets? Oh, okay. Any particular breed or just a uh, Heinz 57? 
Oh, a York Terrier. Okay. I think I've drawn some of those before. Yeah, I used to have a, we had a pug at one time, a, a little wire-haired terrier, and a, 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 shih, a shih tzu, and of course they, you know, you know, what happens to animals, they get, they don't live long enough, but, um, so now, like I say, we currently have uh, the poodle and the two border collies. <laughs> size of a rat yeah you know. my cousin used to have a uh, teacup poodle he had that dog for a long time and it was only about like you say about the size, it fit in your hand even full grown it was a and this this dog here is a uh, considered a, mi a miniature so he's he's only about eight pounds we had to put a little bit of weight on him too when we first got him. He was really uh, underweight, so we fattened him up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my uncle was actually not in not in the best of health when he got the dog, so he wasn't taking very good care of him. But you know, can't blame him for wanting to have something to keep him company. Fifteen years old, wow. Still the size of a football. Say so you the little one the size of a rat, a York Terrier. Okay. I'll be honest with you, I, I loved my little dogs, and, I, and of course I love this guy, but I do love my Border Collies too, because they're, they're kind of, I feel like they're kind of the uh, the perfect combination, because the, the one is she, I don't think she's a full-blooded, she's, she's pretty big, she's about 55, 60 pounds, but then her little sister's only about 45 pounds, and she's about, well, you can't see how tall I'm showing, but she's, they're not real big dogs, they're kind of, they're small enough I can still hold them, but they're big enough that I can take them for runs and things as well. Although the poodle likes to run too. <laughs> yeah, do uh, dogs actually. Uh, yeah, they are. They're everybody. They're the greatest. They're one of the greatest things we have, I think. And it's so fascinating the story of how dogs came about being our friends. They were all wolves. I'm not a big fan of breeds, but just because of the amount of health problems they have. But you know what? I don't, I don't fault anybody who likes having a dog of a certain breed. It's kind of like having a. It's like they're, because they are our children. Yeah, if you ever want a dog that'll challenge you, um, as far as physically and everything, I do highly recommend the Border Collie. They're they're very high energy dogs, though. They're not they're not suited really well for people with small children and stuff because they are hard dogs. But I absolutely love our girls. Um, they're crazy, <laughs> especially the, the younger one. They're very very smart. The poodles are smart. Yorkies, Yorkies are, are uh, sweet babies. They're all sweet. I haven't met a dog I didn't like. <laughs> it's just the amount of love they give. Holy 
This is a good movie. All right, I'm gonna switch back to my other photograph for the body. Yep. I don't know how things are over in the UK, but over here in the States, we get a lot of people who, uh, they hate on the pit bulls. The pit bulls are, are the, they're the, the dangerous breed. And obviously, you know, some of them are used for dog fighting and stuff, so they are very aggressive, sadly, and they end up getting put down. But the ones who get treated right, they are, they are very sweet, loyal animals. I had the opportunity about it's been about a year ago now but I did a lot of caricatures for a local uh, emergency vet we have and they um, I made canvases for them they actually hang, have them hanging up in their uh, their all in their practice um, and one of the ones a lot of the dogs most every dog every dog I did was a rescue and actually if you go to my website and look at my dog art or on my Instagram uh, a lot of what you'll see on there is the work I did for that uh, ER, uh, ER vet, and they uh, a lot of them are, are are pit mixes. Just sweet, just sweet dogs. If you do uh, decide to follow me on Instagram, I have the Melton Artist one. But there, I also have one that's just dog art, and that's uh, Must Love Dog Art. Or I think it is. On, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's easy to find on there, I think. So if you're interested in that. Say, I'm gonna. All right, he is just a good bully. All right, y'all. Right. And I said I was gonna. That's right. I said I was gonna put his collar in there too. So I'm gonna just have that kind of sticking out a little bit. I don't want to make it real prominent, but just enough to show that he has collar on. All right. Let me grab my eraser real quick and clean up some of these pencil lines. Well, it looks like you may, guys, you guys may actually get to see me do a little color tonight. We did this in 30 minutes, so let me go back over it a little bit and add a few more little details, and then we'll uh, move. I'll go ahead and switch over to color, and we can, uh, you guys can watch me do a little bit of the color. All right, I just want to make sure have everything I need yes um, I appreciate that and 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 uh, I'm gonna give you my philosophy <laughs> let's take a little quick we'll take a quick break um, I've been doing this for uh, doing caricatures for about 26 years now I've been drawing since I was six I've always believed this is a talent that was a gift, um, but at the same time, I'm always humble, and I always know that I have room to improve, but I definitely appreciate uh, anytime someone gives me that compliment. I don't take it lightly. Uh, truly, thank you. Um, but yes, it's been a lifetime of work to, to do this. Um, I know some people can't do to what I do in 30 minutes and six hours, and they tell me that. <laughs> I'm not bragging. That's just that's what you know. I hear that a lot. But thank you so much. I truly love what I do. 
I started, I actually started doing art in kindergarten, uh, which would, I don't know what y'all call it over there, but um, they, uh, my, I remember my, my kindergarten teacher, or preschool, I guess what you would call it, she was the first one who told me I was going to be an artist, because when I was five years old, um, when we do art art in class, I had a, nat a natural affinity for structure and uh, being able to capture um, things and understanding three dimension three dimensionality of, of objects without any training whatsoever. Now, to be fair, as I got a little older, uh, you know, we're talking grade school. Um, I did have an older brother who was in high school who was also artistically talented, who sadly did not pursue it as any type of career. But he um, he would come home and he would show me how to draw things as well. But yeah, as far as ability, it was it was natural. I got it from my mother. My mother was a very good artist, but sadly she didn't have any confidence in her work to ever pursue it either. So, and my brother did the same thing. I was, I guess, me being the uh, the youngest child, the baby in the family. There, we're always the rebels, I guess. <laughs> so I, uh, I spent a lifetime working at it, and I appreciate all the artists I've worked with and all the advice I've gotten from people to help push me forward. And it's, uh -oh, don't do it, don't start acting silly on me now. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I do know a lot of artists, and uh, I know a lot of really talented artists, but uh, we actually have a caricaturist uh Convention that moves around the the cut. It's usually here in the. I think most times here in the states, but it's called the uh, International Society of Caricature Artists. So that's that's actually how I know a lot of the artists from the UK. Um, there is a gentleman over there named Paul Moise M O Y S E, who does oil painted caricatures. If you get a chance, look him up. If you're in if you're into caricature, uh, he's very he's very talented. I met him a few years ago in uh, Florida at one of our conventions. But All right, I'm going to go ahead and start with a little bit of color. All right, let me see what we're going to do first. Let's do... I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna start with the, with the nose and the mouth, and then kind of work out. So he has brown eyes. He has really dark brown eyes. I know I made made him mostly black, but oh, thank you. Appreciate that. I used to, uh, when I was in grade school, I always got in trouble for drawing and talking. And now I make a living at it when we're not under lockdown. <laughs> I've, always loved, I've always loved people. All right, and he has a, let's see, I think I need a little bit of, come here. It's amazing how quick I run out of desk space. There we go. So he's got. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to build this up. It's been, I've been doing it for I think this is about my second month streaming, and and I'm just now like I say I'm just now starting to get a lot of the kinks worked out uh, where I was having issues with uh, there again the streaming not being high high enough that it was uh, 
streaming a, a good stream. So, and then figuring out that I had two mic sources running and it was getting echoes. So hopefully, hopefully there's no echo tonight. This should I should have all that worked out. Yeah, I think I think the trick to being an artist is not only being able to draw, but being able to interact with people. And I have a twenty plus years experience of that because I used to work in amusement parks. And when I worked in an amusement park, that's like that's like being a it's a performer because you have people who walk up and watch you draw. And um, especially when I worked at, at places where I had to compete with other artists for to get people in my chair. You know, what's going to make them choose me over the other artists? It's not only about talent, especially if you're working with other talented artists, it's about personality. So, good. That's, that, that really makes me feel good. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> but uh, one, one of the main places I worked, uh, if, if you've ever been to the States, I'm from uh, North Carolina, which is... Um, pretty much considered the south I'm kind of halfway between New York and Florida uh, but I worked here locally at an amusement park when I was fresh out of high school at 19 and then at 20 years old I worked in another amusement park up in what would be considered our north which was called Cedar Point and at Carowinds we had probably I want to say we had about 12 not even 12 maybe maybe about eight caricature artists and we uh were split up between a couple different stands so at any given time you only had you know say maybe three or four other artists that you were competing with to get um people's attention but when i went to cedar point um we had about 20 artists split over three stands um so at any given time you had three or four other artists working alongside you to compete with um, for uh, a commission. We worked on a commission basis. So there again, it was all about um, talking people. You wanted to convince those people walking by why they should spend their hard-earned money with you over the other artists. And they wanted us to hustle. They wanted us to, you know, hey, we want to get a caricature done. Come on over. Come over here get one done. I didn't do that. I personally would just kind of hang back. And I was always, I was kind of quiet. And I would watch people and I would watch their eyes. And when I made eye contact with someone, I would politely say, hey, how are you doing? Are you enjoying your day here at the park? Um, would, you, would you be interested? You know, obviously, would you be interested in caricature? And that approach did so well for me. Um, people would just, they just ate it up. And uh, I've carried that throughout my whole career as an artist is I try to, uh, yeah, we did. We chose, we had a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong. There was other, there was other artists that were just as talented. There was other ones that had good personalities as well. I'm not saying I was the best by any means. Um, but yeah, I, I I made my little niche. I had some good. I had some really good days up there. We worked on a commission basis. We made uh, uh, out of one U.S. dollar, our commission was twenty cents for every dollar we sold. And I think the caricatures maxed out at, at about fifteen to twenty dollars per person. So a typical picture, uh, if I sold it to someone, was a worth about. That average of ten to fifteen dollars, so I made an average of about four dollars off of a picture, two to four dollars if I sold them a frame and all that good stuff. So it was uh, it was fun, and and I think my best week up there, I would we got paid every week or every two weeks. I cannot remember, but I remember I think it was every two weeks, and I remember my checks being you know twelve hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. And I was 19 years old, 20 years old, so that was great money for that age. And I loved every minute of it. No, we had we had some artists. They was our, our actually our manager. He he uh, 
I don't know how he did it, but he would have day one single days where he would work and sell over a thousand dollars worth of caricatures in one day. Um, typically, it was about it was it, it's really good money for a young kid. Yeah, for a young kid trying to get started out, it, it, I, yeah, I highly recommend if anybody wants to learn caricature. Uh, that company is called Commons Art Shops, and they still they. I don't think they're over in the UK, but at least here in the States, they're in a lot of the amusement parks. But I'm sure there's um, I'm sure there's people that have concessions over there as well, if you know anyone who wants to learn this, this art form. They, uh, yeah, it was, you can't beat it. So what I'm doing now is I'm laying in just uh, basic uh, the, the yellows because he has a lot of yellow and a lot of reds in his in his uh, hair, depending on what light he's in. <laughs> the uh, yeah, I, I definitely look back fondly on those days. I didn't go, I didn't attend formal college, so. I always consider my time at Carowinds, which was the other music park here in the Carolinas I worked for, and my time at Cedar Point as my college training, because I learned uh, not just art skills, but as far as dealing with people, and I always attest that to my my first real time out in the world. You know, because when you grew up in a small, I grew up in a small town here. Um, you, uh, of course, you have friends and stuff but you really start meeting people of different from different countries from different ethnicities different uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for I guess political stances or, and things like that when you go to a place like that where you're meeting people from everywhere and you and you really learn to appreciate different um, different cultures I would say so i I was I was never what you would call a bigoted person anyway, because my mother my mother was actually a really kind-hearted person, but um, there again it was just a matter of experience. This draw captures general sense of unfulfillment in modern society right for quantum computers as a... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just drawing a dog, dude. <laughs> Enjoy traditional art. I do digital art too, by the way. I do uh, work on the iPad. Um, I do. It, I shall show y'all. Actually, maybe some other streams. If you end up following me, um, I may do some digital stuff. I'll show you just a couple of them real quick. Let me switch to. Oh, you can see right here. Okay. Uh, so I do a lot of. This is actually some of my commissions from this week. This was for a, uh, this was for a customer. Let me go back to my photos. Here we go. Let me see here. That one's for, that was for a different customer. That was for a website. This was for a website, and there was a, actually my source photo for that other one. This was my caricature I did a couple weeks on stream. Uh, these were all from streams, but yeah, I do a little bit of, that was a logo design for my cousin. He does a, yeah, that was from a couple weeks ago. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of my, um, the ones I do here on stream, 
um, of my caricatures, I do what's called a hybrid style because I love uh, I love the the feel of actually putting a pencil to paper. I don't. I mean, I don't hate digital. I like it. I like it for what it is. I just look at it as another tool. I allowed, uh, just, re just real quick, I do have a mod on here that will uh, filter any kind of profanity because I don't know if we have any children watching, but that wasn't too bad. But So I, I had to review your little message, your message real quick. But I'm not going to tell you what to do, man, I, I, but I do have a mod on here that will that'll, that'll block it. I, I would prefer you didn't um, because I... I I'm hoping that, you know, people of all ages watch this and I wouldn't want to do anything to offend anybody's kids or anything. But that wasn't bad. I'm definitely not going to allow anybody to do any hate speech or anything like that. But No, that wasn't. But I appreciate it. That was, that was a good compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I cuss too, but I try to be family friendly when I'm online. That's, I appreciate that. I raised two boys. They are 20 and 21 now. Um, but yeah, I remember when they were little. I think most, I think most kids probably cuss more than we do anyway, but. You know what? I, I, I don't want to take a chance of getting banned or anything. I want the. I also invite people from my Facebook to watch this, and I'm, I'm like I say, I'm hoping they'll bring their kids and watch it too, and maybe I'll inspire somebody to do art. Well. So, <laughs> yeah, for the kids. <laughs> yeah, because I know I know you said it's. That's fine. Um, I know you said it's one a.m. where you are, but it is a little earlier here. So, I may do some late night streams. Um, and I wouldn't worry too much, as much about it then, obviously, but I'm not a real late owl anyway. I'm usually in the bed by midnight, so. So you were, what, uh, 17? Awesome. I remember 17. It's a great time. All right. Yeah, my my son, uh, he's actually turning twenty. He, I, I said he was twenty one, but he's actually going to be twenty one um, in a couple weeks. So the problem we're running into now is he doesn't have his license yet, but right now we can't get licenses because they're they're not allowing road tests. So he does have his permit, so. Well, guys, it's coming up on 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Go ahead and... Call. We're gonna wrap this up for tonight, y'all. Are you? <laughs> thank you. I think you're the only one I've had live, but um, I do appreciate all your all your chit chatting and uh, hanging out. I'll be uh, yeah, because of quarantine. So um, I'll be doing this again next week, next Sunday, same time. Um, 
I may uh, I have I won't I haven't decided what day, but I may just if you if you're not following me, go ahead and give me a follow here on Twitch, and I will uh, I may throw up a Wednesday stream Wednesday or Thursday, uh, just an extra one in there, and I don't know what I I don't know what I'll do till we get there. I'm always open to suggestions. I do have a whole list of caricatures I can do of people, animals. Um, I have some, I don't know if you can see that sitting back there on that easel. That's a unfinished Yoda picture from about two years ago. I think I need to finish that as well. Um, but there again, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, But anyway, y'all have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful week. Everybody be safe out there. Uh, try to be kind to each other. It's tough right now, especially here. I don't know how things are in the UK right now, but right here in the States, everybody's at each other's throats because we've got a big election coming up, and it's tough. It's really tough right now. But uh, anyway, I try to spread a little kindness and uh, have a little fun with this. And anyway, I hope I'll see you guys again next week, and be good. <laughs>